The Watch OS 7 public beta is just going live right now. So if you're interested in test driving the next generation of Apple Watch software, strap yourself in, literally, because this is a video for you. Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm Rene Ritchie, and for everything new and exciting about Apple Watch for the fall, hit that subscribe button and bell right now so you don't miss any of it. To get on any or all of Apple's software testing programs, go to beta.apple.com and sign up. Just remember, beta really means beta, really. And that's especially true for the Apple Watch, where there's no way to just plug it in and restore it if and when you need to. So make sure you put it on an old or secondary Apple Watch, one you don't depend on all day, every day. Then just have all the fun. Watch OS 7 works on the Apple Watch Series 3, both the original version from 2017 and the 199 version re-released in 2019, the Series 4, and of course, the current Series 5. Individual features though can and will vary, like widescreen watch faces on the older, smaller design of the Series 3. I keep joking that when Apple first released the watch, there was like a list of things it just didn't do, even obvious things that we all just wanted it to do. But year after year, through new hardware and new software, Apple has just been steadily checking things off that list. Better processing, check. LTE networking, check. Edge-to-edge -edge display, check. On-device app store, always on display. And now sleep tracking, just check, check, check. Sleep tracking is coming to existing Apple Watch owners, which is fantastic. It subsumes what used to be the bedtime feature, which used to be in the iPhone clock app back in the day. But with iOS 14 is in the health app, under sleep and your schedule. You set what time you wanna to go to sleep and what time you wanna wake up, just like you used to do in bedtime. You need at least a 30% charge on your Apple Watch any given night for it to work. So if it ever dips below that during the hour before you set it to sleep, you'll be sent a reminder to top it up so you can get just all the way through the night. Then when the time comes, you go into do not disturb. So there are no beeps, no buzzes, nothing to disturb your slumber. And your Apple Watch goes into sleep lock. That way you don't wake the display if you move your arm. If you wanna wake the display though, while it's in sleep lock, you have to actively tap it or press the digital crown. And even then it'll just give you a sleepy time face with date, time, and alarm. If you're supposed to be going to sleep, but you're still faffing around, the Apple Watch will detect the movement and wait for you to actually go to bed. And if you really wanna access your watch after it's gone into sleep lock, you can turn the digital crown. Then it'll wait for you to stop moving and presumably go back to sleep again before locking down again until you wake up, of course, when it automatically exits sleep mode for you. If you want, you can include a wind down experience, which can include listening to white noise, guided meditation from your favorite app, home kit scenes, Siri shortcuts, basically whatever you need to sleep you. When you wake up, you have the same options as the old bedtime system on the iPhone, only now on your Apple Watch. So the same sounds, only now with haptics on your wrist to go along with them. And if you get up a little early and your Apple Watch detects you moving within 30 minutes before the alarm, it'll ask you if you wanna just kill the alarm just to watch it die, which I kinda really always do. Either way, you'll get the wake up screen which shows you your Apple Watch's battery level. So you remember to put it on the charger while you hydrate, brush your teeth, put the coffee on, or just otherwise go through your daily ablutions. And when it reaches 100%, it'll also send you a notification. So you don't forget to put it back on before you begin your morning workout just your morning workday. If and when you want your sleep stats, those are all available in the health app on your iPhone as well. The stats include sleep goals and times, heart rate summary, lots of good stuff. But unlike some other sleep apps, they don't break down light and deep sleep or REM sleep at all. Now it's possible Apple doesn't believe stats like that are just accurately representable at this point in time and are maybe waiting on more hardware sensors in future Apple watches before offering them at all. But it's also possible Apple is doing what Apple often does when it comes to bringing third-party features into the first-party operating system, only providing that base level of features so third parties can be sustained by both the increased awareness around the feature and having the more advanced features. You know, get some Moriarty-level revenge for that Sherlocking, like Fantastical, OmniFocus, Halide, Carrot Weather, and so many other way better than stock apps continue to do. But Personally, I'm gonna to have to wait and see what happens this fall and over the next year to really figure out how I feel about it. And you can of course let me know right now in the comments how you feel. So 
I kinda all caps just entirely love the new hand washing feature in watchOS 7. I'll preface it by saying, I'm the type of person who leaves the stand notifications on, and someone who's smart enough to be truly concerned about the spread of COVID-19. So this feature was basically made for me. Apple has said they've been working on it for a while too, but it's hard not to believe it got fast-tracked once hand washing became just so important to stopping all the spreads and flattening all the curves, especially in North America, where we don't seem to have the self-preservational sense God or the universe gave the common housefly. Anyway, here's how hand washing works. If it detects you're coming home, it'll notify you to wash your hands. When it detects you are washing your hands, based on the movement of the watch on your wrist and the sound of running water and <laughs> squishing soap, it'll start a 20 second countdown timer for you. When you're done, you'll get some haptic feedback to let you know and a little visual just hurrah for your efforts. You can also see all your hand washing tracked in the health app, which I'm honestly not as concerned about. It's the present, not the past, that's really important to me here. And the real time is, like I said, terrific. I've been using it multiple times a day, every day, since it was announced, and it's been working great. And I seriously hope Apple brings this tech to more things, like teeth brushing as well, all the things. And hell, I want my iPhone to remind me to put on a mask when I leave the house, and Face ID to just chastise me if I've left and try to unlock it without wearing one. Dictation is also going on device for Apple Watches with neural engines, which is the Series 4 and the Series 5, and starting with US English, but with other languages to follow. Translation is being offered in 10 language pairs to start, and the Siri Shortcuts app is coming to Apple Watch and can even be added to complications. Matthew Casanelli. A lot of the cool scripting things that you can do works really well. Like you can have multiple step shortcuts that run from your watch or just a single tap and then it'll do something for you. And then even they can be set on the watch face as complications so that you can run your shortcuts just with one tap there. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Thanks, Matthew. And make sure you check him out on YouTube, Twitter, and the web. Maps is adding cycling directions in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and a number of cities in China, including Beijing and Shanghai, which offer you a bunch of options so you can choose between the quickest, but maybe a more difficult route, like in streets rather than bike paths or with stairs or much steeper inclines, or easier, but maybe longer routes. One of the funnest things for me to do every year during the watchOS unveiling at WWDC is figure out, predict what new workouts we'll be getting on the watch. And I'm always surprised, always. Wheelchair workouts, yoga, skiing, just the amount of testing and modeling that team does is always beyond ridiculous in the best possible way. But this year, that's right, it's dance, 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 uns, uns, uns. Apple's using what they're calling advanced sensor fusion to combine inputs from the accelerometer and the gyroscope to figure out asynchronous arm and leg movement. And they validate it against the four most popular styles of dance. And by that, no, I don't mean Fortnite, TikTok, Beat Saber, and Elaine from Seinfeld. I mean Latin, Bollywood, hip hop, and cardio. But it should understand and credit any type of two-step or hot step or just anything that you dance do. There's also functional strength training for everyday activities like family sports and carrying things around the house, which is terrific. Basically the work from home, workout from home, and also core training and cool down. And there's no snow shoveling or Tai Chi or things that are much more of personal interest to me, but I always hold out hope for next year. The activity app on the iPhone has also been renamed Fitness because the scope of what you're doing now is just way more than activity aggregation. It's also been redesigned to improve the information density and glanceability of your data. WatchOS 7 also provides mobility metrics for functional capacity, which has been explained to me, uses the watch's motion sensors and algorithms to measure low range acid fitness, walking speed, stair speed, and in combination with iOS 14 on the iPhone, step length, double support time, and asymmetry measurements, which is apparently really valuable and required for medical labs in the past and is once again an example of why Apple says their biggest contribution to society will one day be measured by health features and why I keep saying the watch is simply the most important product Apple has ever made because it doesn't just save lives as part of a general computing platform. It deliberately, intentionally saves lives by design. New to watch faces this year, no, still isn't custom watch face apps in the watch app store. That one is still on the to-do list. It's a couple or few newly updated watch faces. The first is extra large, which is getting an extra large complication, just super big, boom, right in the middle of time. 
Second, Chronograph Pro, which has a tachometer for people who really like to go really fast in cars and planes and can compute speed based on travel time or measure distance based on speed. So all the zoom zoom. Third is photo filters for the photo face, which basically lets you colorize the images on the watch face to match your mood or your watch band. But like I've said over and over again for the last few years, I still wish photos had much better, richer complication support. Not just because I wanna make a detective Pikachu face, though because that, and I do, but so that it would serve as a next closest neighbor for custom watch faces. My favorite feature though, after hand washing, has just gotta be face sharing, and no, not literal face sharing, I'm not John Travolta or Nicolas Cage over here, but the ability to craft just the perfect watch face for anything, like work, working out, hiking, biking, yoga, meditation, anything, and then sharing it with other people. It's especially cool because with watchOS 7, there's a new multiple complication API or application programming interface. So a single app can take over several, even all the slots on any given watch face. And you'll be able to download those watch faces from the app store where the editorial team will offer some curated suggestions and it'll guide you through the process, making sure any and all the apps you might need for those faces are downloaded and installed as well. But you'll also be able to grab them off the web or off social media. So your favorite magazines and blogs and podcasters and YouTubers and celebrities, whatever, will be able to share their favorite watch faces with you. And yeah, Matt Black, all the watch faces. And you can also share any of your watch faces right from the watch face gallery in the watch app on the iPhone. Just choose the face, hit share, choose who you wanna share it with and how, message, airdrop, or mail. From the Apple Watch, just long press on the face you wanna share, tap the share icon, select the contact, and it'll message away. And yeah, I said long press and I meant long press because just like Apple has done away with 3D touch on the iPhone, they're now doing away with force touch on the Apple Watch as well. And I guess like bell bottoms and hang glider collars, force press has had its time in the sun, but nature, being Apple, has ultimately chosen it for extinction. In most places, not even replaced with haptic touch, but just over menu option. Here's hoping those will actually end up being even more discoverable to even more people and Six months from now, I'll barely remember Force Touch was even a thing. I'm just hoping Apple adds way better machine learning to long press, to haptic touch in general, so we get all the benefits, the simplicity and consistency while mitigating the drawbacks, <laughs> how long it takes. Because that's what machine learning does for pretty much everything. For example, in Brilliant's new neural network course, you can learn how wiring up just five neurons can build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits basically the foundation for how the scribble feature works on the Apple Watch and now the iPad as well. But really, again, just everything these days. Brilliant's a website and an app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and so much more. It's based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. The courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them just a little bit at a time, anytime. There are no tests and no grades. Just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, who cares? Just check out the explanations to find out more. Go to brilliant.org slash Ritchie and sign up for free. Just click on the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Thanks Brilliant, thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my Apple Watch playlist for much, much more and see you next video.